I'm Luke Skogna. I'm a freshman running back from Hensdale, Illinois. He was a kid that was, you know, he, he was tough to recruit as far as we were, you know, 10 hours away from a lot of schools that were closer to, to where his home was. So Carl Reinholz recruits uh, the southern part of Chicago, and he was the one that sent me his tape. Um, and I watched and really liked what he did on tape. But we didn't offer him until I saw him in person at Northwestern. He was one of the best players at that camp, not just one of the best athletes, but one of the best players. Coach Agnew, Coach Reinholz, Coach Froren, they all kind of started recruiting me after my junior season. And I actually originally committed to Western Illinois. Then I went through a little knee injury, and Coach Agnew kept recruiting me, kept calling me every week, and kind of surprised me just because it's like he still believes in me. I just went through surgery. Like, that's a big risk to take, and, and he kept calling me each week, and I felt that my best opportunity, not only with education, but just to get the ball playing slot, running back, was University of North Dakota. So for him, it was a big deal when he chose to go to UND over Western Illinois, and. South Dakota State and, and South Dakota and a bunch of different schools to come here. And he didn't make it easy on us. We had to fight to, to flip him, and I'm glad we did. Aside from football, he's, he's grinding off the field. You know, With his injury, he tried to get back as fast as he could. And then on the field, he's a great player. He's got speed, agility. He's not scared to go out there and, and try to break some tackles. So yeah, he's got definitely good off the field and on the field mentalities. Skokin is a professional in how he approaches everything he does as far as his work in the weight room, his classroom work, um, being in my meeting room, everything he does he approaches like a professional and that's why he's a guy you can trust on the football field. Um, he always has a smile on his face when he comes into meetings and he's a guy that you know everyone likes to be around. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a good part of our program and he's going to help elevate it for years to come. Come on, front side. Good, that's it, good. He grew up in a family of a lot of kids, so he, he's one of ten. I've got six brothers and three sisters, so I'm in the dead middle. And uh, I mean, I love having a big family. No matter when you come home or what you're doing, there's always going to be somebody up, always somebody eating, always somebody watching the movies. Yeah, 10 siblings is kind of pretty much a team. You know, in basketball, it is a team. So out here in football, he's probably got a little bit of experience, you know, dealing with a lot of people at one time and building relationships with a lot of different people in different position groups. I can only imagine, you know, being in a family of having 10 siblings, there's never a dull moment, especially where he is. So he's a sixth of 10, so he's right in the middle. Um, so he's seen some of his older brothers and how they've worked and how they've had success in their playing careers or, you know, just anything they've done in their life in general. And they kind of help set the tone for him in the future. And then he's an older brother that can be a role model for, the, for his younger brothers. You know, so he's kind of got the best of every world. It's pretty crazy. I mean, there's always some little fights or arguments going on. I think it makes you a better person just because you have to adjust to kind of like everybody, like just like kind of fitting in. Me and uh, my second oldest brother, John, there's currently a debate on who's faster. So we're still trying to get a race set up because I mean, he's got like five or six years on me. But if I told you it was me, I'm sure he'd get on me about it. But personally, I think I think he peaked. I think I'm I think I'm faster. <laughs> Having all those brothers and sisters, you kind of have to learn, one, to be able to take a joke, you know, kind of laugh it off, not just take it so personally. So I think that helps not only with the teammates aspect, but with coaching, you know. When my coach cracks me on something, I take it and I say, all right, I'm going to do that and fix that. I don't take it personally and say, oh, he doesn't like me. You know, that's not how I was raised. He can be friends with anyone. He's a guy that our football team is better because of him. I can see him being a possible captain in the future as long as he continues to grow. One, two, three. Nice. Get out of here. Yeah, so what y'all think? The trip out to Weber State was, was a great opportunity for us, you know, facing a top 10 team. The stadium, the scene in Ogden was beautiful. It had the mountains in the background, you could see all around the stadium. I would say it was definitely one of my favorite uh, stadiums we played in, so it's, it's really cool to play in some of those big sky places. It was really exciting for our guys to you know, go out to a great venue in the big sky and, and, and play a great team. It is an exciting time to follow UND football because these Fighting Hawks have a big opportunity this afternoon. North Dakota holds its playoff destiny in its own hand, and today could go a long way to solidifying some of those dreams that these players have for the 2019 season. Our coaches did a good job putting together a good plan, and our team responded well. You know, didn't get off to the start that we wanted. Personally, from a defense standpoint, we just want to play in, uh, the type of football we like to play. You know, we just, communication errors, and we just want to play in physical enough. We had a little breakdown on a special teams that gave them field position, and they run a gadget play, and thought we had it defended well, and the guy made up a really good catch. Touchdown! 
touchdown, Weber State. Oh my goodness. 13 nothing Cats. They just got up on us in our office. Luckily, he kept us in the game. Our guys, you know, responded to that being down early and did a great job getting back in the game. I was really pleased with that to see our belief on the sideline and eventually score our first touchdown and make it a 14-7 game. Kettering and fires downfield. He's got a man. Caught at the 15, 10-5. Touchdown, Travis Toivonen. Touchdown, North Dakota. We knew we were going to have to throw the ball around a little bit. Obviously, their D-line was very good. Uh, and the, the O-line did a great job protecting the quarterback. I think the one thing we did well offensively in that game was keep our quarterback off the ground. I thought that was the number one thing we had to do to, in order to have success in that game. I thought Nate played really well. You know, he took care of the ball. He put it in the right spot uh, a number of times, made some excellent throws. Ketteringham, play action pass, looking. He's got a man. It's Wontek. Wontek, turn, catch, touchdown. Dakota, and North Dakota pulls back within 17-13 with an extra point to come. Defensively, we forced two field goals in the second quarter. Those are big stops and change the momentum in the game. Kick the field goal late in the half to pull within three and then to go up, you know, a, a touchdown in the fourth quarter and had an opportunity to win the game. Ketteringham pass, tunnel screen, caught, Toivon and touchdown, North Dakota! And North Dakota has taken their first lead. That whole game, I think the whole sideline felt like we're gonna do this, we're gonna pull it off. And we really had that belief, every single one of us. Constantine back to pass, throws across, it's intercepted and picked off. Donnell Rogers at the 35, the 40, and Rogers spins out of bounds. The first big turnover of the game. Donnell's had a really, really good year for us and is playing very good football. And they had good field position, and then he picked off the pass and got us the field position. Later in the game, you know, the interception by Hayden Galvin when they were down in our end. Goes over the middle, it's picked off and intercepted. Hayden Galvin. Two interceptions for North Dakota. UND football. North Dakota leads by seven with 7.01 to play in the game. Well, the mindset was to go out on defense and stop them. And we knew we were going to be challenged. Their quarterback made a couple plays in that drive that, you know, changed the field position. And, you know, you got to give them credit. You know, they, they're deserving of their ranking. Good drive for them, really. I mean, we played our thing, they did their thing, but uh, we had a few errors that could have been adjusted. Constantine cuts inside, spins in, he's in. Touchdown, Constantine. And Weber State is a point away from tying the game. It just kind of went downhill from there. The ensuing kickoff, he gets his leg into it high in the air. That is going to take North Dakota. Oh, and a fumbled ball on the return. They're pointing Weber State's way. Brock Boltman had it. It bounced off his body, fumbled forward, recovered by Weber State. The last drive, you know, when we had an unfortunate uh, mistake, our only turnover of the day, we forced a field goal there and gave ourselves an opportunity. And, you know, our guys just kept fighting to the very end. At the end of the day, it doesn't come down to one play changing the game. You know, if we wouldn't have gave up 14 points earlier, just off the bat, you know, it could have been a different game. So even that play wouldn't have mattered. Weber State will escape with a win in Ogden. To have a result like that where it's just right at the tip of your fingers, it's very disappointing. It's very, very sad. When you're just so invested in something and you do lose, you know, you just hate it. You know, you just feel down on yourself, stuff like that. So you just got to, you know, kind of turn around, pick it up and just not feel that way because you know you got another game the next week. There were a lot of, a lot of guys emotional after that game and that's because we put a lot into this and the coaches put a lot into this. So, you know, those, those results are tough, but we feel it can make us stronger and make us better. People win and lose, that's just the game. So you just gotta move on. We still got two games left, we're still in this. So we just gotta move on and get ready for Northern Colorado. We got two playoff games ahead of us, two must win games. Um, so, you know, really take the next thing as the most important, next meeting, the next practice, um, and just focus on what we need to do and what we need to prepare.